This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. Uh, you can check out everything at IndieWrestling.us as well as, uh, as well as uh, uh, what's the other site? WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That's right. Uh, we've done a couple of these in a row. So I'm a little mind jelly right now. But anyways, we'll get through this together. Uh, you can check out everything. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You can contact us at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 if you have any questions for anybody that we uh, may have on the schedule coming up or if you have anybody that we should be talking uh uh we should be talking with on the show any suggestions for that because we can't watch all the independent professional wrestling out there that's impossible only like a godlike thing like marvel's watcher could probably do that but anyways with us today is a newbie in professional wrestling xander gabriel is joining us here uh and he just debuted in the recent month i believe yeah hot off the presses hot off the presses xander gabriel and uh he's uh he's already making a he's he's making an impression <laughs> right off the bat here so uh, well first of all we'll get into what xander gabriel is about but first what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling my earliest memory of professional wrestling would be playing wcw versus Monday Night Nitro back on Nintendo 64. Really? That is my earliest memory of it. You're the second person in in as many months as told me they were introduced via video game. Yes. I, I do not believe I actually watched a wrestling match until maybe 2008. A full wrestling match. Really? And this is probably like a 1997 Sixers video game, right? Yes. Uh, we had it. I had two older brothers and we would rent video games from Blockbuster and that was one of the ones we checked out. <laughs> And we went ahead and played it, and that was my memory of it, the big head mode, everything like that. Big head mode. <laughs> you saw a big head mode and said, this is my future. Yes. <laughs> uh, I guess I didn't have an interest in wrestling until years later. I started actually watching it, and like I said, 2008, when mm-hmm. Miz, John Cena time frame. So my earliest memory was playing video games of it. And I've, I've played some <laughs> since then. I know Here Comes the Pain, the Brock Lesnar one, and Raw versus SmackDown, and now wwe 2k so so is your knowledge of professional wrestling storylines based on like wwe universe mode or whatever was in those for the most part my knowledge is limited <laughs> from 2008 <laughs> forwards yeah now thanks to the network i have been able to go back and watch a lot of things i've caught up on most of the monday night wars uh and since i've actually started wrestling i've gone back and watched plenty more but when i first started getting seriously into wrestling it was monday night raw smackdown 2008 on Let's pull your mic a little bit closer. Sorry. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so, wait a minute. So, so, as you're going back, because I, I want to deconstruct this some more. <laughs> as you're going back and you're watching some of these guys that you played as, do certain things about the characters now make more sense in context? To a degree, mm-hmm. yes. I don't have the fondest of memories playing these games because I was always terrible at wrestling games. I'm still always terrible at wrestling games. Uh-huh. Perhaps now more so than before because my brothers might have took it easy yeah, on and me. They, they've gotten more complicated. Let's be honest about this. It's, feel, those systems are pretty crazy. Uh, it's interesting because I would see a lot of references growing up from wrestling things. Mm-hmm. And then as I got older, I started watching wrestling and I would see celebrities come, or legends come back. And mm-hmm. I would say, oh, I understand why somebody's coming out with a two by four now. I understand why somebody's going woo out throughout <laughs> the whole stadium, and the whole stadium <laughs> follows. And I go, oh, this this is making sense now. And uh, I was there for Daniel Bryan, yes, chance. So I was there from the oh, beginning good. of that. Oh, so good. That, <laughs> Some so when I saw that in sports, I said, "Hey, wait! I know where that's from." I felt I felt like I was in. So, so at what point? And please, I'm hoping it's the video game era. Did you say that this is a thing that you want to do? Never because of video games. Okay. I decided... So the man who shall not be named, Dennis Jackson, the Titan, 
Mm-hmm. I actually was friends with him at my local gym. Okay. And then I later found out that he was a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, we kicked it off because we both liked to work out. And he finally said, hey, you should come in, try out for this local company. I knew IWC. I had been to a few of their shows. Mm-hmm. And I decided, why not? Uh, I was very heavily into wrestling, but mm-hmm. I never obviously did it. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I had nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was in pretty good shape. And going through the tryouts... I felt really good afterwards considering everything they put you through. Mm-hmm. So I said, I think this is good. So this was kind of a whim kind of situation. So what, do you have like a, a fairly athletic background then? No. No? Uh, <laughs> as some people would describe me, I'm big and beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I I started – so I actually went into the Navy in 2008. Okay. And from there, I met some people and I started working out. I got really into fitness at that point. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, I had never played any sports in my life. It always seems the case because I, I, I've talked to a couple of people that have been through armed services. I mean, that really kind of sets your, your discipline up going into pro wrestling. It does. And I got one of the reasons I actually, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Yeah. One of the reasons I came to Pittsburgh was because I got so into nutrition and working out. I yeah. said I should come to the University of Pittsburgh and study nutrition. And I did not study that, but I did come out here still. Uh-huh. And uh, that's how I found out about IWC. Okay. Just from being here, I was into wrestling when I got here. So, so tell me a little bit. You know, uh, you know, the, the the fitness thing uh, kind of makes a lot of sense now that you know seeing uh, uh, your presentation. Tell her, tell us about Xander Gabriel. What what is he about? Fitness first and foremost. Okay. Uh, Xander Gabriel. I was a. You could argue all day that it was a failed TV show producer. I wouldn't say failed. I would say just down on, down on my luck, really. And I was invited to an IWC show by my good friend, Bulk Nasty. And I went there and I just, not that the media was bad, because I thought the media was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Production-wise, great. But the placement of some of the wrestlers coming out, their entrances, sort of the timing, things like that, I just was really upset by. And I saw a lot of the same mistakes I was making so I really, I reached out to Mr. Plummer and I wanted to try out for the studio after Dennis Jackson invited me as well. Mm-hmm. As you can see, I have a trend of just befriending larger yeah, freak, Dennis Jackson freak athletes. A very large, I mean, uh, yeah, he's a huge guy. And huge also guys. Also nasty. Yeah. And that's really where I came from, mm-hmm. from a TV background. And I feel I'm doing pretty well so far. I'm getting out some, some promos and some interviews mm-hmm. with Different wrestlers, you might see them on my Instagram page, such as our assistant principal or vice principal. He changes it up every now and then, Edgar Johnson. Mm-hmm. I got a good interview with Katie Arquette, which I'll be putting on later on today, hopefully. So you're kind of developing this 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 interview show as you're starting your professional wrestling career. It has really taken off. Mm-hmm. I'll say that one. When I cannot wrestle, if I cannot, for example, last night was super indie. Mm-hmm. And I guess Elephant in the Room... We're less than 24 hours after Super Indie, and the first guest you have on your show is Xander Gabriel. I feel that speaks <laughs> to some, some volumes. Well, I just didn't want to get yelled at by Jackson Argos again. That's, that's a fair point. I mean, that, now he's the true. champion, so you wouldn't be able to say anything back. There you go. Just, but here I am finding that if I cannot wrestle, I want to put something out there and let people know that I'm still here. I'm mm-hmm. not just going to sit back and wait till I get another shot at wrestling, getting a, a booking somewhere, IWC. Uh-huh. You're not just going to hang out and catering. No. I want people to know that if I can't wrestle, I can also do interviews. I can also film, which mm-hmm. I did do for a show helping you guys out a little bit ago, actually, at Premier Championship Wrestling. I got to film the first half, which was awesome. Oh, yeah. So you're probably working with Rob up there. Yeah. Rob, yeah. Uh, I can do anything, not just wrestling. Mm-hmm. That's really – my focus isn't just to be the best wrestler out there. It's to be the most useful person to a company that – is going to hire me. So if you need me to film something, I can do that. And I'm trying to show that through my social media via interviews. And then of course, wrestling. This is, I'm seeing this uh, more and more these days. Uh, you know, you know I, it, it seems like um, guys coming up are, are, you know, not just, I'm going to just work on the ring. I'm not just to work on the character. It, it is like you, you guys are all working on this multimedia presentation. Yeah, and you can look right in IWC, some of the people there, the culmination, mm-hmm. they have a really good presentation despite some of their uh, motivations, I'll mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. You have somebody who I don't necessarily get along with, but I respect, Elijah Dean, the man dime. He has very good 
videos that he puts out on Instagram, people are, are realizing that that is kind of the first doorway into who you are. Someone's going to look you up online and find your Instagram, find your Twitter, find your Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you want to have that good presentation. I, I feel the same way and I'm just getting into it. So I'm not even at my best that I could be, but I'm playing around with the tools that I can get via, if it's Instagram, if it's an iPhone editor, something like that. I, I finally put together a two minute montage for super indie the other day on my Facebook page. And I just used some very cheap video software that I had, but I really mm -hmm. enjoyed creating it and putting it together and helping push my company IWC. That's that was awesome. my goal. So it's definitely people have to be multitasked, multifaceted. I'll say it's kind of funny because we were, you're just, you know, before you were in here, we're talking about Paul Atlas and in his era coming up was the nineties where it was like getting on television was basically the way to get out there. And there's so many more outlets now. Um, so, so uh, again, uh, like we were talking about a little bit beforehand, um, I, I brought in solidarity. I brought a, a fanny pack. Uh, it's not as nice as yours, but uh, yours is very inspirational over there. Tell us, tell us about it. this. This is this is something that oh, it's an LED. Actually, it also lights. I'll do the whole thing for you. Okay, we're we're in daylight daylight right now, so I don't know how. I'm sure this looks better in a lighted uh, uh, dimly lit arena. Oh no, that's pretty. That's yeah, pretty if bright. You can't see it. Lights up on the there sides. There you go. Uh, just so I can find things easier. <laughs> it gets dark backstage. And also it has your name um, emblazoned in a scrawl uh, LED there. So, I mean, that's good because, I, I mean, there's a lot of fanny packs. And, uh, you know, in case the lights didn't um, stick that out there. So so where did uh, where did the, the idea for the, fanny, like, really blinged out uh, fanny pack come from? I don't know if it has one singular origin is this kind of evolved over time originally the scrolling led my mm -hmm. original idea was to have a belt going around me not like a championship belt like a belt that would hold up your pants mm -hmm. but have it made of leds and it would say xander gabriel scrolling around it hmm. so a flexible led screen basically in researching that i found multiple suppliers who would sell this material mm -hmm. but they were all in China and could only sell them in thousands. Yeah, so, and, I, and I think Samsung's recently having some trouble with that technology. <laughs> yes, them, uh, what, Hawaii? I don't know the pronunciation. Huawei, I believe. Huawei. Huawei. So that idea was put on hold. Maybe if I meet someone who's very good with LED objects, like if DJZ ever, if I ever go to NXT, I'll work with him. <laughs> uh, that idea was scrubbed, but I still wanted to get someone that would scroll my name so I could just let people know who I am at all times. So if you're not looking at me, you're probably going to looking at something that's flashing and saying Xander Gabriel. So you can't really, who is this guy? So this is the an your answer to putting your name on the tights. Yes, I did that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and googly eyes too, just so I had a good trademark idea, uh, which is not trademarked. So please don't take that. But, uh, and I appreciate your fanny pack, but I will say mine. And I'm glad there's only two people here today. Cause I did bring you guys oh, no. uh, a present. Oh, no. Uh, two two headbands. Oh, nice. Now, these will be gifts for you two. However, you can get them as well. Two for $5. Uh, I have them at all my shows. And soon we'll probably be shipping them out. So okay. you can get those after, though. That's fine. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so, so, tell, tell me, so the googly eye headband, uh, where did that come from? So this one I do know very well. Originally... I started to grow a mustache mm -hmm. and I grew very fond of it, pun intended. So I went to a Michael's, an arts crafts store of some sort, and I decided I wanted to get googly eyes and some red felt and put it on the front of my pants where my uh, endowment is. And I realized that that might not be very PG and very acceptable to all wrestling promotions. So I made a compromise. I said, what if I put googly eyes on my butt? So that way, when I'm moving and in action, you'll see them jiggle around. And from there, I decided I should put on a headband to help block out some sweat. And what better place to have aisles in the back of my head than on my headband, which will go all the way around at all times. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it doubles as a safety device as well, so I can see everywhere. But it's also just a, a fashion statement that says, you know, I'm constantly watching and ready. Always looking out. <laughs> yes, to the future. However... Also, anytime I move, if I'm doing a promo, even if I'm going away from the mic, uh, it's in action, which mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate. That's awesome. So, 
<laughs> so you've had a couple of matches so far here uh, between uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling and IWC, of course, with the Proving Ground show, uh, which is a really big uh, debut for for you guys out of that school over there. Um, how I, we kind of joking? We can we can. Some, I am Black Diamond actually too. Yes, uh, match I still have to edit here for this month on the on the Indie Wrestling Network. Um, so so how is your experience getting out there uh, with this in front of people? Been how has the reaction been from the from the audience? In one word, fun. I mm-hmm. uh, I'm very fortunate to have started with IWC because they are such a well-known organization. They're also now on Facebook Live, so I'm really joining at a good time. But outside of IWC, like you said, Prospect Pro Wrestling, Black Diamond Wrestling, it's so far been fun, which Mm -hmm. I think my biggest concern getting out there would be being nervous, you know, uh, knowing if I'm going to be able to perform the moves that I've been practicing for so long. And sure enough, I have been able to do them fairly well. And I'm three matches in, so I know I have a long time and a lot of experience to obtain, but it's been a lot of fun, which I'm super happy about. I'm not getting very nervous before a lot of shows, uh, perhaps this one, but just presenting myself well. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been really good experience. I've loved going on road trips to different areas, however long. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even if I wasn't booked somewhere, like Premier Championship Wrestling, I got to go there. And I was not booked to wrestle, but they needed someone to do the first filming mm-hmm. of the first half. And I was happy to be a part of that. So, so far, getting out there has been awesome. I'm really, really digging it. Awesome. So, again, kind of a young career here so far. But uh, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? Best part, I would say, is the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. And that could be men, women just getting to know somebody, getting to bond and getting to talk to them because what you're doing is you're going out and doing a very intimate presentation for people, especially at this level of wrestling. Mm -hmm. So being able to share that with somebody else and then have fans react to that is something I really am enjoying. Like I said, fun. I'm actually having that in something that I care about. Unlike my full-time job, I could care less about that. This is great. Mm -hmm. I love coming backstage and getting critiqued on my match because I'm, these are things, these are pointers that I care about and want to take back and study. The worst thing is pretty simple and it might just be at this level of wrestling is communication. A lot of communication is lost. I feel sometimes, and this isn't so much as far as the wrestling, but as far as, and like I said, this is why I came to IWC. A lot of production is lost communication to the security guards, communication to the referees, communication to the ring announcer, uh, which matches next, things like that a lot of times you lose valuable time to prepare for something because you didn't know what was coming next. Mm -hmm. Uh, that goes with everything so far. This well communicated here. I knew exactly where you guys were. So Bravo, (laughs) Sorgatron media, the best. That's that's my two things, I would say. Awesome. Well, of course, uh, we had a little bit of your video show. We're showing a little bit there on the video side. But where can people find you? Generally, like you said, you're at 2PW, IWC, and uh, lately a Black Diamond. Anywhere else you're expecting to pop up in the coming months? If I'm lucky, Premier Championship Wrestling, or if I'm really lucky, AEW and WWE. Uh, not holding my <laughs> breath on those ones, but who knows where you'll see me next. I'm on Instagram at Xander underscore Gabriel. Mm-hmm. I am, yes, a Game of Thrones fan, so I'm on Twitter at Breaker of Gains. And then you can find me on Facebook at Xander Gabriel. There you go. Hey, keep an eye on this guy. I think, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people, uh, their first interviews shortly after debut on this from the Delilah Doom. So even the Britt Bakers, who did some pretty fun stuff just last night as of this recording. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on Xander Gabriel. Follow him. I think there's going to be some good stuff coming from them here. Uh, of course, go check out everything at uh, IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you'll see uh, on the network uh, your first, I believe Prospect was your first match, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, that is over on Not the network. Not my best. Not your, it, well, I mean, it was kind of an impromptu thing, I believe. Yeah. I so, do have a rematch coming up against him soon, good. which will probably air after this. But There you go. There you go. Prospect Pro Wrestling, part of the Indie Wrestling Network. If you want to go check that out exclusively over there. And of course, they have uh, another show coming up uh, relatively monthly. So go check them out too if you're in the area. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, everybody, please support Indie Wrestling. Oh. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.